The Declaration of the Rights of Men and of the Citizen is the supreme document of the French Revolution of 1789. While revolutionary France debated over the rights of men, it fell short to address the status of women and slaves. As a result, a cry for liberty rang throughout the colonies of France. On the night of August 21, 1791, rebelling slave leaders organized a secret ceremony in Boacaima, the Cayman Woods, outside of French Cape in Saint-Domingue. Shortly after, a general uprising was launched and dozens of sugarcane plantations were torched while rebelling slaves massacred hundreds of French painters. The rebellion spread like fire. A former slave named Toussaint Louverture emerged as the supreme leader of the revolution. He rose through the ranks of the military with lightning speed to become the governor general of Saint-Domingue. Under his leadership, the French territory received the constitution, one that put it on equal footing with France, the mother country. Toussaint Louverture is nevertheless a divisional general in the French army, and as such, he falls out of favor with Napoleon Bonaparte. The French emperor dispatches an army of 20,000 soldiers to reclaim and to re-establish colonial order in the once prosperous colony. Napoleon sends his brother-in-law, General Leclerc. The force lands in February 1802. The territory's coastal forts fall one by one, and for a brief time, the French army controls all of the territory of Saint-Domingue. Toussaint Louverture is captured during a truce and sent to France, where he's incarcerated at the Fort de Joux on August 20th, 1802. He dies eight months later on April 7th, 1803. Despite the huge setback with the loss of Toussaint, the indigenous army quickly regroups under the leadership of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Other able lieutenants will soon join forces, notably Alexandre Pétion and Henri Christophe. Using guerrilla tactics, avoiding frontal attacks, and fighting in small units, the indigenous army turns out to be a force to reckon with. Towns are captured one after the other. In the face of an able adversary, the French army makes a last stand at Vertiers on November 18, 1803. After the loss of this decisive battle, the French army capitulates and leaves the shores of Saint-Domingue on November 30th, 1803, never to come back. On January 1st, 1804, the independence of the territory is proclaimed in the city of Gonaïve. Since this land is known as Haiti, a name given to it by its original inhabitants, the Tainos. The independence of the new nation also marks a new beginning in its concept of defense. The return of the French had long haunted the fathers of the Haitian Revolution. It is no surprise that a series of precautionary measures were taken to frustrate such an eventuality. Foremost was the notion of abandoning the coastal cities and retreating inland. This is most apparent in Haiti's first constitution, which clearly stipulates At the earliest sign of alarm, the cities will disappear and the entire nation will be up in arms. Jean-Jacques Dessalines, the man who led Haiti to victory, was appointed governor general. One of his first orders was to issue the following decree. The commanding generals of the various departments will order the brigade generals to erect fortifications on top of the highest mountains of the interiors. Signed, Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Haiti is unique in the sense that 
Haiti is the only country that came out and was built on a successful slave revolt. To consolidate their independence, the Haitians have built on the highest mountain of this country a series of forts, and we have calculated so far about 22 of them. And among those forts, the Citadel is the biggest fort ever built in the Americas. The military commander of the Northern Department, General Henri Christophe, undertakes the construction of various forts. But his most famous work is the Citadel La Ferrière, Haiti's pride. Seated at the peak of Mount La Ferrière, this colossal structure could hold 12,000 soldiers and had a firepower of nearly 200 cannons. In the Western Department, General Alexandre Pétion ordered the construction of Fort Jacques and Fort Alexandre for the protection of the city of Port-au-Prince. In the southeast, General Magloire Ambroise did the same by building Fort Auger on the outskirts of the city of Jacmel. In the Artibonite Valley, General Jean-Jacques Dessalines built his new capital city, Dessalines, inland. He also ordered the construction of five forts overlooking the new capital. One of these forts was appropriately named Fort Fin du Monde, the end of the world fort. Altogether, the fathers of the new nation built more than 23 forts and four cities over a period of 20 years.